Maldives, one of the most beautiful destinations for vacation in the world. It's not the cheapest destination, but you still can be here on budget. However, food costs three times more than nearby Goa. And lodging costs more too, but you won't find uh, bamboo shacks like in Goa. Most of us imagine Maldives as a blue water, blue sky, palm hanging over the water, calm, clean water with a lot of fish. That's true, you can find this all in Maldives, but it's not everywhere. Many islands have only one scenic spot for a good picture, and some islands don't have this picture at all. For example, on Toulouse Du, most of the coast will have this bushy tree, and only one location will have a scenic view. In general, I was shocked from the beaches. Most of them are not well maintained, trashed, and uh, you can find all kinds of stuff, broken bottles, just bottles, uh, bicycles, pretty much all kinds of trash you can imagine you will find it on the beaches. For example, island Mafushi has only one good beach, which is maintained by expensive hotel and is located just in front of it. All other beaches are trashed and not maintained, but I was shocked by other things. On one of the beaches I found this thing. More likely it is from a Second World War, but it doesn't matter, it can be dangerous. And it is located between the airport and Hulhumali. So be careful, watch stuff around yourself. One of the surprising things in Maldives are the taxes. They can charge taxes like 70% of the cost of your hotel. However, it's not the rule. Usually I can see they charge about 35%. If multiply these taxes by number of tourists come every year, you can probably literally pave the sidewalks in gold, not just do a cleanup job on the islands for tourists. This is the sewer pipe that comes from each hotel, and you can see it on some islands every 50 feet, and it dumps the sewage right into the ocean. Expensive hotels hide it very well, but cheaper islands, even on the best beaches or maybe only beaches, you will see these pipes coming from each hotel. And often you will have no choice but swimming among those pipes that often break, leak, and you, you will see it on some other videos. Some locals on some islands will tell you the stories that they are building a new sewer treatment plants, but in reality you don't see it being done. You see that some places they start it, but nothing is done. So there is a chance you can have unpleasant encounter from these pipes, but I personally didn't. The high season would be the most vulnerable time, because a lot of people dumping their stuff into the ocean. A bit different situation on a private islands where resorts are located. You won't see exposed pipes, but they still put out it into the ocean, but everything will be beautiful and nice. But this beauty usually costs much more than a private island. For example, on Mafushi you can rent a room for $45 per night. But on a private resort island, it starts from $50 and uh, up to $50,000 a night. Maybe it's worth it once in a lifetime. Nice warm water, scenic sunsets, warm weather. The cost on a private resort island will be not only in lodging, but in everything else. For example, you can have a dinner for $100, $150 comparing to $12 on a public island. And the tourist attractions can cost uh, up to 10 times more to the same destinations. Similar situation with the transportation transfer. Commute to public boats don't go to private islands, and you will have to charter entire boat and pay for it just by yourself, and it can be $20 comparing to just $2 on a public boat. And sometimes you need to get an airplane because your island located too far away, which can cost $400 each way. But many people pay the same kind of price for flight round trip from Europe. In recent years, tour industry in Maldives changed for good. Before, there were some private beaches where you cannot go, which were owned by resorts. 
Now you can go to any beach in the country. Before, tourists were not allowed to go on uh, public islands. You needed to get a special permission, fill out a special form in order to go to see the locals. Now tourists can reside on any island they want. But you have to be prepared. Every day at 4.30 a.m. you'll be waken up by a loudspeaker with the Muslim prayers from nearby mosques. And those mosques are on every island and uh, more likely they're going to be a couple of them. Also, you will need to find the schedule for Muslim prayers because stores, transportation, government offices, everything closing for those prayer breaks. And the time can be different. For example, in normal time it can be one schedule and during other holidays like Ramadan it's going to be a different schedule. For Ramadan they usually have a breaks for the stores from 12.30 to 1 and I've seen they close it up to 2 hours and sometime in the evening from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. During month of Ramadan they also change the schedule for public booths. For example, I came on time, like 25 minutes in advance, but the boat has left because they changed the schedule half an hour earlier. And for some islands, boats leave once in two days. If you miss that one, you're gonna have a next opportunity only in two days. It's not very pleasant because you have all your plans already done, your schedule, your trips, your hotel probably expensive already booked, just it all can be wasted. The minimum price for public ferry boat is 30 rufias, that is 2 dollars, but if you're gonna pay in dollars they're gonna charge you 3 dollars because they have exchange rate 30% uh, less. That would cost 2 hour trip. The general rule for public transportation in Maldives is the following. Here is Mali. It is the major and only hub for transportation in Maldives. All transportation routes start and finish at capital Mali. In about 8 a.m. in the morning, public boats start their journey toward the capital. Locals and business people go to Mali for their shopping activity. So people will have about 6 hours to do their business and at about 3 p.m. many ferry boats start their journey back to the islands. They bring all kinds of merchandise because the price on the island stores often doubles. This kind of plan works for Mali Atoll and South Mali Atoll. But for Western Atoll the schedule is a bit different. They come one day and they return on another day. It is twice a week for Atoll Rasdu and three times for Atoll Ari. For public slow ferry boats you cannot buy tickets in advance. You have to come the same day and before the departure buy tickets. But there is no problems that you will be lacking some seats because usually there are plenty of space for everyone even to lay down on those benches. However, you can pre-book by a phone call for some speedboats they usually charge 10 times more than a ferry. Keep in mind, these are the pricing you will pay if you pay in rufies. In dollars it will be on 30% more. So it's better you exchange some rufies at the airport before you head to your island. Here's in a website where you can find all schedules for public slow ferry boats to many other atolls. You see, you can get to most atolls for cheap. Here's the schedule for northern islands, for the southern islands, for the western and western southern. For the speedboats you need to sign up in advance by a phone call. And the price will be different if you have a work permit or if you are just a tourist. And the difference is about 4 times, $6 versus 20 Also you can come to the pier and see if somebody doesn't show up and you can take their seat. It's better not to change your money all at the same time because at the airport exchange rate is low by 3% that you can find in your resorts and hotels. The use of local money rufies are quite limited because on most tourist places you pay in US dollars. But keep in mind you can change your money back only at the banks and if you have receipt from them. Which island to choose? If you are family it's better for you to go to a more quiet island and those are usually more further away. It will take about 3 days for you to get saturated by the beach and nice water. 
and then you will get desire for some tourist attractions and then you can switch an island to a more touristic one for example at Mafushi you can get a very cheap packages for your tours and daily activities for example at the hotel white sand they offer a package for $120 for a three-day activity with three dinners and one lunch you can try different activities with a reasonable pricing for example scuba diving starts from $40 that is one of the cheapest prices I've seen in the world. If you go to northern destination, island Toulouse-Dou, you will find 2-3 times less lodging opportunities and less tourist services, but you will get a surfing industry. If you choose western islands, you will get more quiet rural environment. The newly created island Huhumali, that is next to airport, is more a residential island, but it has the potential to become the major tourist destination for Maldives. It already has 2-3 times more lodging opportunities than in Mali or Mafushi. But you still see a lot of construction and 200 more hotels are being constructed right now, so it will be a major island with a great beach. This information I wish I would find before going, but I didn't. Now it's different for you.